earthquake. Quite literally, the earth literally quaking is how to survive them. If you're outdoors when the quake hits, move away from buildings, power lines, and other objects that may fall on you. If indoors, seek shelter under a table, a desk, or anything else that may offer protection. Do not shelter underground, as you may become trapped forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. If you are trapped, the best way to attract attention is to make tapping sounds, as these travel well through rock. After the earthquake, do not light matches or cookers, as there may be loose gas around which could easily ignite. Finally, when the quake has finished and you leave your house, make sure to wear thick-soled shoes to protect your feet from broken glass. Earthquakes. Messy, dangerous, and best left well alone. Oh, it's wonderful. Imagine you're coming back from seeing Father Christmas in his snowy Lapland workshop. Now imagine that Father Christmas has given you a chest of elven gold, very much like this one. You're so happy, oh, you could really give your tummy a good rubbing. <laughs> My belly. <sighs> a bread. Bang on a minute. Picture this. What if you've taken a wrong turn in the forest? What if it's getting late? What if your chest full of gold is weighing you down? Where's happy old Santa now when you need him, eh? Who's going to help me now, eh? I need someone to get me out of here. Anty, hello. Hi, Nick. I've got a problem. Um, I've got this chest full of looted Finnish booty, and I need to get it out of the forest, but I'm dangerously lost. I'm a little bit tired, and I don't want to leave this behind. Um, if I don't get out of this soon, darkness, she will come, and I will be stuck. I'll be Finland's richest corpse. OK, uh, we'll pull the sledge. A sledge? Yeah. What we'll are we make it, uh -huh. and you can pull it. It will make your moving easier. Right. How are we going to build a sledge in this place? You need to find the right kind of wood, and I will show you how to do it. All right. All right, I'm well up for that. Why don't we... Uh, hang on. You can help me with this. Be careful, it's sharp. Oh, <laughs> I like her, she's nice. Do you have a name? Pardon? I'll call her Jenny. If you wish. Let's go, let's, let's, find, go. A, let's find a tree, man. We went off in search of trees, which proved surprisingly easy, yeah. seeing as how we was in a forest. Right, well, I can see three thin trees, but I'm not seeing a kind of gold transportation system. How are we going to turn this into a sled? Well, first, going to use these two. Uh huh. Uh, to make, make the, the runners. Speech. Yeah, yeah. the runners. Yeah. I could see this was going to take some time, so I decided to let Anti get on with it right. while my mind drifted ominously to thoughts of other poor souls who'd been left out in the cold. The lowest ever temperature recorded was minus 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and that was in Antarctica. When Paul Sipple was exploring there, it was so cold, his eyes froze shut. And in Ashley Cherry Garrard's case, within 15 seconds of exiting his sleeping bag, all his clothes had frozen stiff and his teeth had shattered. I decided to stop thinking about victims of the cold as it was starting to frighten me and concentrate instead on finishing that sledge. Let's see how it's progressing. It's ready. All nice right. one, Auntie. Let's quit this frozen forest and start spending that gold. Yes. All right. Uh, I, can't. Uh. I don't want to pull that. I'm lazy um, and quite drunk. What are we going to do? Of course, I wasn't really drunk, but I am extremely lazy. I needed something to haul my heavy load, and as luck would have it, at that very moment, one of Santa's elves wandered by with a herd of reindeer. It's almost as if he's one with the forest. Using all my steel and guile, I quickly moved in on the strongest-looking reindeer, and before he knew what was happening, he was mine. Need to get this over his neck, right? 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Unfortunately, what I hadn't counted on was the reindeer's very own cunning escape mechanism. Oh, well. Well, uh, the antler broke off in my hand, so we're going to have to try again. The one that got away. The one that got away. Time was running out, and with the Arctic sun due to set in just four days, we had to move fast. Fortunately, it quickly transpired that Santa's elf, Berti, was corrupt, and in exchange for a bit of my gold and Auntie's knife, Jenny, we were soon the proud owners of our very own snow horse. OK, well, I've got my sledge, I've got Berti's reindeer. More importantly, we've got the gold. What we're going to do now is spend, spend, spend. Let's get out of here, Auntie. Let's go. Let's go, mate. So as Auntie and I head off to the flesh pots of Helsinki, let's remind ourselves how I made good my escape. Make a sled out of young trees, bits of string, and any other wood you find lying around the forest. Gently creep up on reindeer. They're not used to our ways. Exit the forest immediately and blow the gold. Too sweet. So once again, terror and danger have been transformed into comfort and happiness. I like to call it wilderness alchemy. That should keep the forces of danger at bay for another week until I face these new enemies. Morning! Heat stroke. We tell you what it is and what you can do about it. Snakes! What to do if one bites a lump out of ye? And how to drive your car like James Bond did in that film he was in. Hello, John, how are you? I'd just like to point out that reindeer naturally shed their antlers each year and that no animals were harmed during the making of this programme. I myself, however, received several grazes and a nasty chafe. But don't worry about me. I'm lazy um, and quite drunk.